All right, welcome to week 12, Bible Studies for Life, continuing the story of Joseph. This week, we pick up again in the middle of a story here as Joseph has uh, been leading the nation of Egypt and, and taking care of the grain. And now the, the time of famine, the, the seven years of famine has begun to hit. And we're two years into it, I guess, when we get to this point where um, ultimately people are coming from other nations are coming to Egypt to get food to get grain because Egypt has it because under Joseph's direction, they stored it up over seven years of abundance and they're coming now to get grain when they run out. And, and interestingly enough, some of the people that come, Joseph's brothers, they come to Egypt to get grain for their family because they don't have any. They've run out now. We're two years in. And they come and they... Um, they see Joseph, but they don't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognizes them. Uh, I mean, they don't recognize Joseph because Joseph, in their mind, is dead. He didn't survive that. He's not in charge of Egypt, you know, at the very least. That's not happening. So they're not looking for him. And even if, so, and you know, he's dressed in Egyptian dress and all of that. There's just no way they're going to recognize him. It's been years and they have no way. But you have to think that Joseph was probably wondering if his family would show up. I mean, he had to be thinking that. And so eventually he goes through several things that happen and he gets to this point where he's got his brothers at his house. Um, they're having dinner and he, he is asking about the father. He's asking about his little brother, he's not there, you know, just all these things are going on. And finally now it's time for Joseph. He, he can't take it anymore. He's got to tell his brothers what's going on. So that's where we're going to pick up here in Genesis 45. Before we look at that, be sure that you subscribe to our channel, like the, the video, uh, comment on it, share it with other people. Uh, let them know uh, about what uh, we're teaching here about Joseph in Genesis and explore the Bible and all of that stuff. All right, so let's look. Says Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants, so he called out, "Send everyone away from me!" No one was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers, but he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and also Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, "I am Joseph. Is my father still living?" But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Okay, so he he finally has the big reveal. And it's, I mean, this is extremely emotional for him as he has been building to this point with them and knowing who they were and all of that. And so he sends everybody out except he's just got his brothers in there. But he's so emotional. It says he's weeping so loudly that everybody heard it. Pharaoh's household heard him weeping. Now, they don't know why he's weeping. They don't know what's going on. But they hear him weeping. And Joseph named, he says, this is who I am. I'm Joseph. Is my father still living? No, that's who he wondered about, right? They couldn't answer him because they were terrified. Now, why are they terrified? Well, because they have not treated Joseph very well. And now Joseph is the guy who holds their lives in his hands. I mean, he can have them executed in a heartbeat. He is the, you know, running the nation under the leadership of the Pharaoh. He's running the nation. He can do whatever he wants to do. And, and they sold him into slavery. They're terrified. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near me. And they came near. I am Joseph, your brother, he said, the one you sold into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve a life. Okay. He's making very clear who he is, right? And and naming what they've done, right? He calls them, y'all come over here, come close. I am Joseph, your brother. He's to tell them again, right? The one you sold into Egypt, remember? The guy you sold into slavery, that, that's me, right? Making it very clear that he, he knows his history. He's telling them something about Joseph that someone that was going to pretend to be Joseph could never have known, right? And don't be grieved. I mean, they're the only ones that know. The brothers and Joseph are the only ones that know. So he, he's the only one that can tell them that. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me. This, man, this is amazing, right? Now, I think it's, it's, not, it's not a small thing for us to recognize that Joseph 
has grown into this understanding. I don't, I don't think we would say that he had this understanding back when he was working for Potiphar or when he was spending time in jail. But he has grown into this understanding, right? And so he is urging them to forgive themselves, to find the forgiveness from God, right? This is don't, don't be grieved and don't be angry with yourself for selling me because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life, to preserve your life. God has sent me ahead. Now, this is the theme for, for Joseph as he talks to his brothers. This is ultimately the Lord has used this. The Lord has worked through this so that when the time of famine came, the, the, my family would be preserved. When you think about this in the, in the picture of salvation history, the family of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that is preserved through the work that God does in the life of Joseph and bringing them to, to Egypt to be saved. You think about how that is so important because this is the one from whom ultimately Moses will come, from whom ultimately Jesus will be born. The Savior, all this work that takes place in the picture of the exodus out of Egypt and how that pictures salvation and the blood on the doorstep and all that stuff, right? All that is wrapped up in this idea that this people, this, this family has got to be saved from this famine. And somehow they, they need to be in a place where they can prosper. The Lord worked through all of that to get them there. I'm not saying that what they did was right. I'm not saying that what they did was in God's will. I'm saying that God took what they did and he used it for his plan, in his plan for his glory. It's Romans 8, 28, right? Return quickly to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me without delay. You can settle in the land of Goshen and be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and all you have, there I will sustain you, for there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise, you, your household, and everything you have will become destitute. That is, you need to go get your father, and you need to bring everyone. Tell him your son Joseph said this. Right? God has made me Lord of Egypt. God has put me in this place, so come and you can live, because there is going to be five more years of famine. God has prepared this somehow uh, in, in the sovereignty, in the, in the foreknowledge of God. He has used this to put me in this place to get your family here so that you can live. God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by great deliverance. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Do you see? He's got this very clear understanding now that this has been God's will. This is what God has been working towards. That God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant. God needed you to be a remnant in this land, right? To keep you alive by great deliverance. Therefore, it's not you that sent me here, but God. God sent me here. He's very clear about that, and that is, that's part of how, why um, he's been able to forgive, part of why he's been able to be merciful to them, part of what God has allowed him to forget the pain and the hurt and to be gracious and generous to them and to see that, that, what, that what happened, God used. And if God used that in his plan, then it, it must be okay. This is uh, this is so key in this whole passage. This coming to an understanding. Now, this is being able to look at our lives, not in the midst of, in, in the minute detail of every moment, but to pull back and to get a God perspective on our own lives. And that's what he's doing. Joseph has been able to pull back and get a God perspective on his existence and on what has happened to him. And so that he sees how God has used every little step along the way. That even the, the unjust um, selling into slavery put him in Potiphar's house ultimately. And that, and that the, the unjust accusation of rape put him 
in a jail where he could meet the, the baker and the wine taster and interpret their dreams so that one day that interpretation of dream ability would put him before Pharaoh, which would then put him over all of the nation and in a place where he could deliver his family out of famine. This is so important that we're able to get out of the minutiae of our lives and pull back at times and see God is at work. God's at work accomplishing his purpose in me. Even though I may not look like it in the minutia, I see in the big part God is working. So important, so important. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. God bless you as you teach, as you prepare. Share the video with others. Be sure and subscribe, like, comment on it. Let us know how God is teaching you. Maybe share just in the comments how you have come to see what you can see God doing in your life, big picture-wise. Thanks. All right, we'll see you next week.